Oh, God serves as the first waterbender for anybody who watches Avatar. Oh, God takes all of the waters that are in the world, forms them, pushes them out. Half of the waters fill the lakes and the valleys, the oceans. The other half of the waters rise above, creating the waters of the sky, the waters of the Shemayim. In this moment, God stands back and says, this is good. Waters of the earth and waters of the sky. But there's a voice that's crying out. It's the ocean. The ocean is spilling its tears. Waves crashing back and forth. The ocean crying its salty tears. God turns towards the ocean and says, why are you crying? And the ocean just sobs and sobs. And God asks again, why are you crying? Why are you crying, ocean? And the ocean says, when people turn towards you, God, they'll raise their eyes up to Shemayim, They'll raise their eyes up to heaven. They'll speak to you as if that's where you are. They'll forget that you're right here. That you surround all of us. And they'll forget that I too am part of this great, this great cycle. God says to the ocean, dry your tears. Wipe them away. For I promise you a breed. I promise you a covenant. A covenant of tears, a covenant of salt. And in the future, past this initial moment of creation, in the future, when B'nai Yisrael merit to give their korbanot, when they merit to give their sacrifices, every single sacrifice will have salt. Every single sacrifice, every time they come near to me, every time they come near to God, every time they're seeking kedusha, holiness within this world, it will be through salt. You will be part of this holiness. You, the ocean, I promise, will always be connected to me. But the rabbis, they teach this legend in Bereshit Rabbah, chapter 5, part 5. And Rabbeinu Bachia, rabbi of the 13th century in Spain, he brings this legend to teach a strangeness within our Parsha, a strangeness which Rabbi Schwartz already alluded to. That we have in Vayikra 2.13, four mentions of salt in just one verse of Torah. Three nouns, one verb, all related to salt. And the rabbis ask themselves, why is it if the Torah is always there to teach us something, if the Torah is always there to, uh, to bring us some holiness, if the Torah is normally very to the point, why, is it, why does it say that you shall season your every offering with salt, that you shall not omit from your meal offering the salt of your covenant with God. With all your offerings, you must offer salt. Could have just said it once. Rabbeinu Bachia says this is to teach us this legend of the ocean crying out in the way that we have fulfilled God's promise. And we bring the salt in our korbanot. And we bring the salt to our Shabbat tables. And each time we dip our challah into the salt and we remember the ocean's tears, we connect the ocean back to God, back to Shemayim. 
If you look on Sfaria, if you look at the commentary to our Torah portion, there's actually over a hundred interpretations for why salt is mentioned three times as a noun in this one verse. So Rabbeinu Bachia's interpretation, it stands, as do a bunch of others. And when I looked at his interpretation, in this Midrash, the story that he brings of the ocean crying out and God answering with pity, God answering to the prayer, a different section of our tradition came to mind. It teaches in the Talmud, Masechet Brachot, it teaches that from the moment the Holy Temple was destroyed in the year 70, that we as people, we feel as if the gates of prayer have been sealed with iron. We as people feel as if our prayers cannot reach God. The Talmud teaches that there's one way that we can unlock the gates of prayer. There's one surefire way. We do not need a temple. We do not need sacrifices in order to reach God. And that's through tears. That through our crying, the gates open. That through our crying, that that is what God always responds to. Again, it's in the Talmud. So the next voice disagrees with that and says, sometimes God doesn't respond. But one idea is that God does respond to prayer always responds to tears in prayer. Well, maybe the lesson of our Parsha, the lesson of our Torah reading today, is not only about how we add salt to our challah on Shabbat, but maybe it's about how we choose to approach God, or how we strive to approach God in our prayers, our prayers which are the substitute for our sacrifices. Maybe what our Torah is speaking to us this morning, and in this moment in Jewish time, and in this moment right before Purim, maybe what our Torah is speaking to us is that we shouldn't be afraid of our deep emotions. We shouldn't be afraid to cry when we talk to God. We shouldn't be afraid to imagine that God listens and that God answers. God answered Esther as God answered B'nai Yisrael. Well, maybe the lesson of our Torah portion is to invite us at this moment in time to allow us to let our tears fall, to imagine that God will hear our cries, release our people. It's not easy to do. It's not easy. But the message of salt, the message of the ocean's tears, and God's response, it should give us strength to enter into our prayers, to enter into our prayers with that kind of open heart, and to let our fears and our self-consciousness, to allow it to melt away. And we should believe Adonai Hoshia Beyom Korenu that God should answer us in every moment where we call out. But may we be Zoha to open up our hearts this Shabbat. May we merit to open up our own gates of tears and to be answered. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>